I'm Bambi Francisco with this segment of Lessons from Entrepreneurs, and I'm speaking with Tony Conrad, who founded Sphere in 2005. Tony, thanks for joining us. Hey, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Tell us a little bit about how you started Sphere. How did I start Sphere? So um, it actually started, the idea of it almost started in a different company called Oddpost, which I was an investor in and a board member of. And um, when we launched Oddpost, we did it through traditional media. Walt Mossberg wrote a great column about it and drove a certain amount of awareness and trial of the product. But then the bloggers started blogging about it. And two A-list bloggers, John Battelle and Dave Weiner, blogged about it back-to-back -back days. And the amount of traffic that we had to the site was just exponential. And um, so, you know, we started kicking around a lot of ideas, what that meant for Oddpost, which was a webmail client, an Ajax base. It was the first Ajax based. Um, uh, webmail client. We mm -hmm. called it DHTML. Um, so that's how old that is. Um, <laughs> but anyways, we started kicking around a bunch of different ideas um, about what was the role of RSS aggregation, what was the role of blog content discovery organization and those ideas and whiteboarded a bunch of them up and as luck and fate would have it, Yahoo came along and made a preemptive acquisition of the company. That was a great um, exit for everybody involved, and so we took that avenue with the company. But a lot of those ideas really resonated with me, and I felt like you know we should, you know, kind of continue to kick the tires a little bit. And so zoom forward into 2005. Tony Schneider and I. Tony was the CEO of Automatic. He was, uh, you know, in the process of figuring out what he wanted to do next, and we just started meeting and talking a lot about the blogosphere and and how. How could we help people discover blog content mm -hmm. in a kind of a unique and fresh way? Um, and so, as you know, what Sphere does is contextually, it, it looks at an article, analyzes it contextually, and finds connections between that content and what other people might be writing about similar, um, you know, topics around, you know, that topic. So when you, back in 2005, you raised $4 million, but I'm sure there were times that you up against some, um, you know, criticism. What was the number one criticism? You know, we didn't receive a lot of criticism. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I think it's just, you know, not to be, maybe I should pinch myself. We were lucky. Um, you know, you know, I've been a venture capitalist, right? So I've been around the investment community for, for quite a bit. Um, and Tony and I have both been involved in technology for a while. So I think we had a little bit of an unfair advantage in that um, there were a number of people out there that we had worked with closely. And we went to those people and they funded us. Um, and I think they funded, uh, you know, they funded us based based on us as was opposed to the idea. Was there one question that was uncertain? Well, I think everybody was looking at it and going, "What's the real merit of the blogosphere? You okay. know, is this just a bunch of diaries, sure. you know, and people going off on their little diatribes, mm -hmm. or is this something that, you know, is going to really add to the voice, you know, add to the conversation?" And, and was it your belief that they would? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You could already see you have a great blog, and people like O'Malley. Um, or Mike Arrington, you could already see that they were starting to add a voice to this particular conversation that might be happening in mainstream media, but a very unique voice. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Three lessons learned as an entrepreneur, or think, three pieces of advice. Well, learned. I think the first, the first lesson I've learned is that you want to absolutely make sure that you're working with and surrounding yourself with people that you really believe in. Mm -hmm. Right, that you're excited to wake up in the morning and to be a partner with in developing an idea. There's a lot of doubt, as you're you're kind of pointing out, that can creep in. I've had a, a lot of doubt, you know, throughout the process. Um, but it's really great to have those people that can help you keep perspective and kind of help you charge forward. There are also people where you don't have to worry about them. Um, you know, the roller coasters, you know, up and down, right? They're pretty steady um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and to keep a good perspective about it. Second thing is find a big problem and a really hard problem to solve that nobody else has done. Um, it doesn't mean other people haven't tried, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes mm -hmm. people may have tried that. Those might be the best ideas if nobody's figured it out and you've got a unique approach. Um, and I think the third thing that, you know, we've done really well is that we haven't overextended ourselves. You know, we've been hugely successful in the past year, and at the same time, we've only added one person to our team. We've kept our burn incredibly low. What's your burn rate? Um, over, uh, under $150,000. You know, we're on over a billion article pages, so it's it's a. How many people do you have? We have nine people, so okay. it's a very low burn rate. Um, and, and and you know, there's probably a point where maybe we're starving the business, and maybe we need to invest a little bit more aggressively now. Mm -hmm. But you know, we kept it very simple, and I think that frugality allowed us to find an idea that worked 
and then to go deep on it, right, and execute incredibly well on that particular little idea, and then use that as a foundation for figuring out other things that you can do in and around your idea that are potentially bigger, um, and that we've done really well. And I see entrepreneurs make this mistake all the time. Those are great pieces of advice. Who's inspired you? Um, there's a couple of people. Um, the guys at Odd Post I found very inspiring. Ethan Diamond um, and uh, Ian Lamb. Um, there's a story that they sold their car at one point in time in order to be able to finance their operation. I think a lot of um, my philosophy around you know being very frugal in the beginning, you know, stems from having watched them really kind of bootstrap it in that 02, 03 time, or was it 03, 04 time period. Um, Matt Mullenweg is another guy, uh, founder of Automatic uh, WordPress, just an exceptional entrepreneur, um, incredibly talented, and another guy who has taken a very, you know, let's get it right, we're not in a hurry, you know, our job, our, we're in a hurry to get it right, but we're not in a hurry to appear uh, to be doing a bunch of things that we don't need to be doing. Um, so those are, those are three guys that are pretty great. It sounds like you're sort of following... A bit. <laughs> hey, you know, I'm hoping. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, Tony. Great. I've been speaking with Tony Conrad, who founded Sphere in 2005. I'm Bambi Francisco.